Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another episode of Will It Run? So I picked up a generator off of Facebook Marketplace and this guy was free. The owner had posted it about a week ago for 50 bucks. I had saved it, you know, I thought it was cool. It's an older model, but I thought, okay, we'll give it a little bit of time to see, uh, see if he lowers the price or with time we can offer a slightly lower amount. Well, a week later, I got a notification from Facebook that the price dropped by $50 and it was free. So I went ahead and picked it up. Now, I don't know much about this generator. Um, it is a five horse Briggs and Stratton that you can see right here, older style. And you can tell older style by not only the plug up there and our ground is simply just that little tab right there that just grounds out our circuit. But if you guys take a look over on the side and you probably won't be able to see it very well. We have our model type and code numbers over there. Well, to fill you in, if you look at that third set of numbers for the code, the first two digits indicate the year. And this was made in 1978. So in 2020, it's a fairly old generator, but I don't see how we can't get it up and running. Now this guy does have two 120 volt plugs and that fuse right there that's a glass fuse in there so older style but still pretty cool nonetheless um, overall impressions not seeing too much craziness I'm seeing a little bit of oil down there but nothing too too bad so I think we'll go through our standard checks and see if we can get it up and running. So we'll first go ahead and check for spark and we got the older style lead up here and in case you guys were wondering this is our kill switch so essentially when you're done using a generator flick it over and this grounds um, out our spark plug so that way the engine stops producing spark and shuts down but without further ado let's see what we got. Okay, not too, too bad. I know, really dark over here, but uh, there's just a little bit of carbon buildup on there. So I don't know if this plug is as old as the engine, but we can at least check to see if we get anything. Yeah, the only good thing about this whole setup being dark is that the spark should be really easy to see down there. So go ahead and give it a couple test pulls. Hang on, let me see if I can get that better. There we go. So yeah, it's got a fairly good compression. We got spark. Next, let's tap into the air cleaner and take a look at our carb and see what kind of gas was stored in this guy. And actually, before I put the spark plug back in, I did peek down into our cylinder. And I don't know if you can see in there if it wants to focus or not. We do have a little bit of buildup, some carbon in there. Um, I don't know how bad it is. Um, we'll definitely try to get it running. But I'm planning on keeping this unit for myself, not selling it. It's a nice little generator if it does end up working. So we will probably go ahead and clean the cylinder and the piston. Well, not the cylinder, because the cylinder's probably okay. We'll, we'll take a look at it when we take the head off, but definitely the piston will need a little bit of cleaning up. So uh, on to the fuel system and then try to give it a test fire. Okay, so let's take a look at our air filter how dirty this guy is. Usually generators don't run in dusty environments like a lawnmower would, so this guy might actually not be too bad. Oh, not too bad at all, actually. So we'll go ahead and pop this entire housing off. 
and uh, it could use a decent cleaning, uh, not too, too bad. Um, for testing purposes, I will say it should be a-okay. So we'll get this guy aside, and we'll take a look at our fuel tank as well up here. So these are the uh, Pulsa Jet carbs from the older Briggs and Stratton style. Essentially the carburetor is attached to the top of the tank and it has like an internal bowl for the carburetor just at the top so the fuel is constantly circling through this tank into our carb up here and our choke lever is this guy. So let's take a peek inside and see what we can see. Um, overall tank is dry, sorry I'll try to get a good light in there, yeah tank is pretty dry, so that's a good sign, that means the owner had previously drained the tank in here, hopefully our carb is okay, but I'm going to go ahead, check the oil, make sure that's okay, spray a little bit of starting fluid into our carb, just to get a quick quick fire to see if it's worth uh, pursuing and then we'll go ahead and just take a look at our main jet in this guy and just make sure that everything is okay with that. So we'll go ahead and get you guys set up. Okay so I went ahead and checked the oil. We're actually a little bit over full and it looks pretty clean so what I'm guessing is that the previous owner couldn't get this guy to fire. Maybe they added a little bit of clean oil on top, but regardless for testing, we'll go ahead and just fire it up and see what happens. I went ahead, took a look at the governor, all these linkages, everything seems to be functioning uh, as it should. I'm not seeing anything glaring that would cause this guy to kick on full throttle. So, um, I think we will be all set to spray a little bit of starting fluid in here and see if she fires on. Now I do have the garage door closed just because it's freezing outside. I don't anticipate this guy running for more than a couple of seconds so a little bit of noxious gas shouldn't be too bad for us but uh, as a disclaimer just don't start any engine in an enclosed space just because those fumes are pretty nasty. But without further ado we will go ahead kick this guy on and see if she starts. So. Choke open, open the spray, close the choke, and see what happens. Plugged in, not grounded. Ah, actually we got choke off, so let's see. Ah, she fires up. That was enough of a sputter for me to want to clean this guy up. So, let's go ahead and take our tank off, take pictures of our linkages because this is a fairly, I wouldn't say complex system, but just so that we have reference when we go to put everything back together. And let's get this carb cleaned. So these carbs are actually pretty neat, so I thought I'd give you guys a quick rundown. And it turns out that I didn't have to fiddle with getting this guy off because our main pickup tube from the bottom of the tank is clean, it's hard to see through there, and then our main jet, which is that guy right there, that's clean too. So I probably could have just thrown some gas in here and just started it up, but you never know until you check everything. But to give you guys a quick operation of how this guy works, so this sits in your tank and there is this main fuel pickup tube, which is powered by this fuel pump right here. So as you are pulling your pull cord, there's a breather on this guy right here that draws in fuel pressure to suck up fuel from the bottom of the tank into, there's like basically a bowl built into the gas tank and it fills that guy up. And then you have your main jet and your pickup tube here for the carburetor. This guy sits in that upper bowl area and that is connected with an air fuel mix screw up here as well as our throttle plate in here. Now, 
This is where our air filter connects up to and we have our choke valve right there. So air comes in, gets mixed in with our fuel that's picked up through our bowl that's built into the tank and then gets shot into the engine. So had this guy apart, figured I'd show you just a quick demonstration of how that guy works. And we'll go ahead, now that we know everything is nice and clean, we'll just throw it back onto the engine and throw some gas in and give it a quick start. Okay, so we've added some gas, oil, still a little bit over full, but I think for starting purposes we are okay. So let's fire up the generator, see if she runs, and more importantly, see if we get power output. Okay, so I clicked you guys on there, and I know my neighbors are probably furious, but I just want to give you guys a quick heads up. So, that screw that we were screwing in up here by the carb, it's not the right one. What you want to do is look up here, and this guy right here adjusts your idle. So, this is the linkage that runs down to the governor, so that guy. When you loosen it, you slow down the engine speed. So, and if you want to speed up the engine speed, obviously just tighten it in. Since engine speed and voltage are directly correlated, I was seeing about 130 volts. I went ahead, loosened this guy, and that dropped my speed down to where I was reading 120 volts on the multimeter. And then we showed that we plugged in a light, which was good. You don't want to run too fast, otherwise you can fry your equipment that you plug into here. So, I think with that being said, we are, uh, we're we're all set on this guy. Like I said, I plan on keeping him just as a nice small little generator. I don't know the brand. I mean, I'd like to say maybe a Coleman Powermate, just because they have similar style power heads over here, but not 100% sure. If you guys have a similar generator, let me know what your thoughts are. But Regardless, nice small power unit is always welcomed and nice to have around. So, with that being said, I'm going to clean everything up because there is a little bit of oil and dirt pretty much everywhere. I'll order a new air filter. Spark plug still works, but just to have a new one, who knows, we might go ahead and order one of those guys as well. And then clean up some of the cylinder and uh, the top of the piston as well, just to make sure everything is nice and good to go. So, I want to thank you guys for watching, and just goes to show that on Facebook Marketplace there are deals to be had. This guy ended up costing nothing and didn't really need anything other. I tore the, uh, tore the carb apart, but at the end of the day, just throw some fresh gas in there, make sure all of your linkages are adjusted, and we have a perfectly fine running unit. So, with that, We'll catch you in the next one.